Right, today we're going to be starting up a new short series of videos on small boat ownership. Now, I started going out in small boats from the age of two years old, and I've pretty much grown up with it, uh, different types of boats from small open boats to cabin cruisers. I've been out in big boats as well, but like I said, this is more about small boats today. And even when I went up and lived up in Sweden, I had a small boat up there, uh, about a 12 footer, used to go out on the lakes, sort of around the fjordy kind of things and uh, even fishing out on ice and that but not so much in the boat completely different though, you've got to get your boat out there or it'll get crushed if you leave it in the water in the winter so there's that so anyway today's video will be on the safety aspects of it now we will cover um, things like the costs involved and where to put your boat and how to use your fishing equipment maybe from a small boat these kind of things and we'll do different videos for each one of these so anyway we'll be covering the safety aspect today uh, what I carry on the boat and why I do things the way I do them and what I feel is important in safety equipment now I'm only going over my experiences over the years of being out in the boat and the fact that I'm still here to this day and the fact that I yet to be rescued as well so there's that. On top of that, I have actually pulled quite a number of people out the ocean. Well, I pulled one off rocks, one who couldn't swim out, one boat that was sinking, and well, there's been numerous broken down boats, but there was one which was a real tricky rescue getting through the rocks because his boat was so big, it was almost pulling me into the rocks. But anyway, we're not going to be going into any of those today. Um, those are for another day if I ever want to talk about those sort of things but anyway here it is um, my thoughts on safety and what I carry on my boat right so what do we carry on the boat now I've put you in a box because we've still got as you can see probably see the weather is just raining and wind all the time but I want to get this film because I actually want to get this boat covered so I can work on it now I'll start off with these things because I get a lot of people saying where's your life jacket uh, where's your GPS where's your radio all this sort of stuff all the time obviously you don't see it because it's it's tucked away now there's the life jacket I carry now I don't often wear it there's several reasons for that and I'll explain why one is if I'm outside the bay and you go in the water you're gonna have to swim you're gonna have to swim blinking fast or as quick as you can because you're going to be up against the cold water. The other thing is the tides are so strong, when this inflates in the water and you're in it, you're going to get dragged very, very quickly. And if there's no, I mean, a life jacket is only any good if there's somebody there to save you. So you should always go in the mind with having a small boat of getting yourself out of any situation. Now, that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't be wearing one of these. If you're in the bay, brilliant. If you're places in the UK, maybe where you don't have these strong tides in certain areas and that, these are brilliant. And places where there's lots of traffic on the other side of the island, brilliant. Because people, if you're in the water, they'll see you. But if you fall in with this, where I am, you're going to get dragged out. And you are, you are leaving the island. You're either going off south or you're going off north. Basically, you're going to go past the island or off out to sea. Your only chance is going to be to swim. And if you swim, if you've ever tried swimming with a life jacket on, you're going to struggle. It's going to hinder you. So there are reasons for why and not. There's not just a, a one rule for everything. It doesn't work like that. Every instance has its own reason. So, but I always carry one. I can always put one if I have to. So I've got the life jacket. And the other thing, when you see me wear these jackets, these are both flotation jackets. As far as I'm concerned, far better than this. Simply because these will keep you warmer. They're designed to keep you alive. So when you see me wear these jackets, they're not just jackets, they are flotation jackets. I've got two, I've got, that's the old one, and that was the newer one. But, now you'll see me wear these mostly when it's rough weather. I mean, one reason is, they keep me dry. Obviously they're waterproof from the outside, but if you go in the water, they'll keep you warm, they'll keep you afloat. Now, you may think, well, why do I wear it on rough weather and not maybe on calm weather? If you wore one of these on a hot sunny day, you will cook to death. They are that hot. They keep you that warm. So you can't wear these in really hot weather. The other thing is that when you go out in rougher weather and other boats go out, 
A lot of boats don't go out, some go out. Now if you go out you happen to be in rough weather, people are more likely to be looking out for you. Other boats are more likely to be looking out for each other because they know you're out there, you know they've gone out in the rough. People will see you and say, well what's that boat doing out there? And on a dark day as well, you're more likely to be spotted with bright orange and the rest of it than on a bright sunny day. On a bright sunny day, nobody's looking out for anybody. Everybody's just out there fishing, but on a rough day, people tend to look out more. So if you do end up in the water, or you do end up in prom, you're more likely to get spotted. So that's for why I wear that. Plus, like I say, in rough weather, trying to swim as well, um, you're probably better off just floating off and trying to last as long as you can. But like I say, it all depends on the conditions. Now, the other things that we always carry, now obviously I've taken everything off the boat because it's obviously the winter now so I've only show I've brought stuff out and I'll show you some of this. I might miss a few bits that uh, are in the shed. So VHF radio. So I carry one, I never use it. It's purely here for emergencies or anything like that. And it's in a waterproof thing, even though I, I believe it's waterproof anyway, it gets charged up every year. In fact, every year I go to charge it up, it's fully charged. It never really drains. It's been like that for years. Brilliant, brilliant thing. Um, so we have that if we need it. First aid kit. Basic first aid kit, just in case you cut yourself open, you can patch up, that sort of thing. I mean, you can buy these for boats, marine ones, but to be honest, they're pretty garbage. You're better making your own for your own, what you think you'll need, but depending on what you're doing in the way of fishing. And of course, flares. We've got smoke flares, parachute flares and handheld flares in there. So there's all different ones. So always carry those. An air horn to attract attention just in case you get yourself in trouble. You can you know make a lot of noise. So one of those. Spare cord in there. You never know you need that. Now the other thing we carry anchor. Now the thing is with an anchor is some people will say, you know, if you get yourself in trouble, throw your anchor down, stop yourself drifting. Now that is good advice to a point, because if you throw this anchor down in some of the strong currents where I fish, you will literally sink your boat, you'll pull your boat under. It's as simple as that, the tides are so strong. And I have experience with this because my father did it once. We ended up having to knife the rope before the boat went down, and that was a 19, no, it was 21 foot, I believe. 20 foot, it was a Loftus Bennett cabin cruiser, and it almost pulled the boat down, dropping it down in a strong tide. So, yeah, not always a good idea. Another guy I actually rescued once, he tried anchoring, same thing, he almost sank his boat, had to cut free, and I found him drifting out to sea, this old boy, got a rope onto him and towed him back in. And I had my little boat, and I was towing this boat, it was like what, one and a half ton or something, I think his boat was. So, anchor, carry one, but as soon as you get into trouble, don't just throw your anchor over and think it's going to stop you. I mean, it depends again where you are. If you've got strong tides and you're on a spring tide somewhere and it's ripping like crazy, anchoring your boat could be a very bad idea. Now what I tend to do is I tend to just put it on a 10 mil or an 8 mil rope. That's enough to hold the boat, enough to anchor the boat. I wouldn't anchor your boat overnight on it, but it's good enough to stop your boat. The thing is with the slightly thinner rope, is if you do need to knife it, it'll be a lot quicker, a lot easier to put a knife through that than a bloody great nylon anchoring rope. So, like I say, it all depends on what area you're in. Sometimes you can just throw the anchor over, other times, bad idea. Now, another thing I carry, which will only apply to people with two-stroke, but I've got a backup two-stroke engine, so I always carry uh, enough oil to make up another five litre can of petrol. The um, engine is full of petrol always, it's got its own internal tank, but I always carry it spare, just in case. Talking on the lines of petrol, another little trick which is useful. I carry a hose, a small, it's like an air hose, you know, like for a fish tank, something like that. What this is for is your petrol tank. The trouble these days with four strokes in particular is the slightest bit of water in the tank and it will stop your engine. The two strokes aren't so bad, they'll tend to sort of spit it out, although they will stop, start sort of thing. But four strokes can be a real pig if you get water in. So what this is for is if you look in your tank and you see like dirt or little balls, that can be water, well that is water usually, in the bottom. It's always at the bottom because it sinks, obviously the petrol stays on top. So this is basically just to be able to siphon that out. If you siphon 
in the petrol, then go over where the water is, you can suck that water out of your tank. So if you ever get petrol water in your petrol, you can siphon it out of your tank. Alternatively, you can buy like a filter which filters water out. But I always carry that in case I ever need to remove water. Now, something else I carry is a basic tool kit. It's got fuses in it. The engine does have fuses in it if you look in the engines. So I always carry spare fuses, spare blocks in case I need to change any of the wiring. If something goes wrong with the GPS or the fish finder, I, I can do it out there. Very important, spare pull cord. A lot of the small engines, you've got their own pull cord, but you can take the top off, you wrap this around the flywheel, and you can start the engine without the built-in pull cord. So if you snap your pull cord, you've still got a spare cord. And the rest is just spark plug panners, uh, spark plug spanners, spare plugs. Previous year ones that were working fine, I was chucking here because I know they were the last ones to work properly. Uh, that's just a spare one for the reserve engine as well. And just a selection of spanners and things which or keys, things that your engine uses. You normally get a toolkit if you buy a new engine anyway, but always carry bits and pieces, you know, like 10 mil spanners, 17 mil, uh, 13, all sort of most common ones. Screwdrivers, star and flathead, or Phillips. And yeah, that's your toolkit. Now we also carry in this boat a uh, GPS, which is this one here. I also carry a handheld compass, but both these cameras have compass and GPS on it. I say GPS, it's just uh, longitude latitude. This has a compass on it as well, and I've also got a fish finder down there, and that has all the same sort of stuff. You can click onto compasses and locations and all the rest of it. It's got everything built in. So we've got all the electronical equipment as well. Plus, like I say, we do have it on the cameras, and I do carry a little map compass just in case everything fails <laughs> and um, yeah I mean there is like I say other things I carry spare what I will do as well is I always carry a spare five litre can of fuel now this is just a can that sits in the boat I mean I, I switch it out every week or two uh, with new fuel but basically it's a different fuel to the fuel you've come in with your can and filled up your boat just in case there's any contamination and it has happened to me before where the fuel was contaminated, it had metal and water and all sorts in it, um, which stopped my engine dead. So you've got a clean can of fuel from a different day, so it's different fuel to what you're using. So if you have a problem with your fuel, you can flush out your fuel, stick in that spare can and get yourself home. It's also useful because if you've got a five litre can, being I've got a two stroke, I've got five litres of oil so I can mix it straight to that can, I've got five litres of spare fuel for the reserve engine. Now. Now we're going to go and have a look at, well, we'll look at it in a minute, but there's one piece of equipment on the boat which I would class as the most important piece of equipment to carry on a small boat of this size. Not a large boat, and maybe not a tiny boat, but of this sort of scale, size, this is 16 foot, anything from sort of 14, well, 12 even, 12 up to, um, say, 18, 20 foot, something like that, depending on the style of your boat as well. One very important piece of equipment you should always carry. But before that, I'll show you something else as well. Now, I'm gonna take you out of here. I don't know if you ever thought about it, but if you ever fall over the side of this boat, you think, yeah, well, I'll just climb back in. And sometimes you can. Normally you'd have to go around the engine, but the problem you have is your feet will go under the boat when you're trying to pull yourself out and you can't climb out. So what I always carry, is there's one here actually, I always have carry a rope. The idea with this rope is the rope is always attached to the Samson, like so. And I always leave a loose bit of rope there. Sometimes at the back. The idea is you can reach up, you can reach over, grab this rope, and you can drop it down like so. But the important thing with this rope is, once it's over the side, you can tie loops, just a loop in the rope like that. And you can put your feet in that and you can get some purchase and better pull yourself out of the water. Literally, you have a, a foot to get into something to better climb out the boat. Without it, and I know from diving and that, it can be an absolute nightmare to try and get back in the boat, especially this boat. Some boats are worse than others, depending on how high the sides are, how much curve you've got on the boat, that sort of thing. But your legs will always go underneath and you're relying on your arms. And if you're soaking wet trying to pull yourself out, it's a big problem. 
Right, let's go and look at, take a look at the most, what I feel is the most important bit of equipment you should always carry on a boat like this. So there it is. It's what I consider to be the most important piece of equipment, safety or backup, whatever you want to call it, on a small boat like that. And that is the reserve engine. Because this, out of all the equipment I carry, this is the one piece of equipment that has got me out of several sticky situations in the past, is the reserve. Whenever you go out on the ocean, you should always be prepared to be able to save yourself. Um, you should never rely on other people. I know you can just like get on your radio, some people just get on the radio, give their mate a ring, he'll come out and get them. But the point being is, if anything goes wrong, if your radio stops, if your mate is in China on holiday or something, you need to be able to save yourself, and you shouldn't be relying on the, the emergency services either. If you can't, emergency services are your very last resort. You know, that is the final stage that you should be thinking about. You should always be able to get yourself out of a situation. And like I said, this has got me out of a couple of bad situations in the past with breakdowns, broken engines, that sort of thing. That has got me home, whereas it could have been a lot worse without it. So I always remember as a kid, a couple of instances where we had to tow boats in and I always remember that as I you know you go to sleep at night and you can't sleep when you're a kid like that so excited to go out fishing and you get up the weather's fine you know because it isn't always fine and it's fine weather you get out there and then what happens you end up having to tow a boat in all because he couldn't be bothered to carry a reserve engine and even to this day it that's one thing that irritates me especially when it's a boat we say, you know, it's, it's an expensive boat with an expensive engine and they've got a mooring somewhere which, you know, the expense of all that, and yet they don't bother with a spare engine. Right, fire equipment. Now, like this, like fire extinguishers. Now, this isn't actually a boat one, this is actually for the shed. I keep it in here by the door in case there's ever an uh, issue with a fire. Now, with the firefighting stuff, I don't carry anything on my boat. Pure and simply, my boat's too small. Uh, my engine is obviously only a small engine. Um, you don't have many options when it comes to if you had a fire on your engine. It's literally you either throw over the side whatever's on fire, throw yourself over the side, or the most likely one is you grab a jumper, a coat, whatever, dunk it in the sea and smother the fire. Now, if you did want to carry something, you could carry a fire blanket. That would do the trick, but again, it's one of these things, if you've got a fire blanket in your cuddy, by the time you've got any cuddy, got the fire blanket out, unpack the fire blanket, got it out, you just want to take your coat and throw it over the fire while the fire was still small. So you have to think of those things. Now, um, I have a license, obviously, and the license there's always requirements on the license. Now, I don't actually, I'm not required to carry firefighting equipment on that small boat. Pure and simply, because it is too small, engine's too small, but as you get bigger engines, or if you had an inboard engine, I believe, then you're gonna to need to have fire equipment. It all depends on the size of the boat, size of your engine, how much fuel you're carrying, all that kind of stuff. And obviously the bigger it is, the more equipment you're gonna need. Um, you can take steps to minimize any risk of fire. I mean, it's, the risk is very, very small. Obviously, if you smoke, that kind of thing, then your risk just went up. But if um, I don't actually smoke, so that risk is gone, you might say. And the other risk is don't put your electrics with your fuel tank in the same place kind of thing. Keep your electrics away. I have all my electrics sort of midship to sort of the front. Uh, the only bit of electric you have is there's a cable which is designed to go to the engine, which is the charging. It's only a six volt, very low trickle volt, which comes out the engine, which keeps the battery charging. Um, but again, that's on the outside and that's all covered up and that's... You know, it's not down in around the fuel tanks, anything like that. So yeah, keep your electrics away from your engine and you shouldn't have a problem. Now, other things that I uh, have on the boat, which I haven't shown, is I've got things like torches. I carry a torch in the boat, just in case you, for whatever reason, you're out there at night for, you know, maybe you, uh, your engine broke down, it took you time to get back in, it got dark. Um, the other thing that you might have seen on the boat was I have a radar reflector so other shipping can see me and I also have there's a light on top of the boat which is just to show other boats really where you are at night um, it's I mean it, it does illuminate the boat a little bit if you use it the trouble 
what I was fine with it is when I put it on and I motor it, it, it catches my eye and I'm trying to look for the, uh, not rocks, but bobbers mostly. And if you're being sort of blinded a little bit by this light, <laughs> um, it's kind of working against you. It might show other shipping there, but it's not helping you from running into things. So, yeah, I might have to do something about that. It needs to go up higher, but the trouble is you can only have a pole so high in a little boat before it gets ridiculous. And another bit of good advice is when you have a boat, talk to the fishermen around there. Talk to the local fishermen that go out fishing every day. Or, you know, I've been there for years, especially the older fishermen. They know what they're talking about. They know the oceans. They know the currents. They know wind directions, how things work. They know that sometimes in one area, just because the wind's going to drop, just because the tide's going down, it won't necessarily mean that area is going to get nice and calm. It might suddenly get really violent. It does here. When the tide drops for an hour, the water will join the current and everything gets really, really fast for an hour or so, maybe two hours, hour, two hours, depending on tide size. So things like that, you can learn from the older fishermen who've been out there for years. And even little areas you go in can vary so much. You know, one area, ah, yeah, perfectly safe, flat, calm, no problem, do some fishing. The other area, it'll sink your boat. Yet this could be on the same day. So always speak to the fishermen. Now, one other thing, important thing is if you're ever out in rough conditions or conditions I mean I, I try not to go out in rough conditions as such I go out and I mean the times I've got into situations which have been quite scary um, they've normally come on to me like the winds got up the waves got up something happened the school blew up you know these sort of things when that happens never lose your nerve never you've got to keep your nerve if you start panicking that's when things will go wrong you know that's when things get serious now you'll feel it inside obviously you you'll get that horrible welling up inside and you've just got to suppress that you just got to no keep your mind occupied keep because while your mind's occupied you are focusing on what you're doing um, another little tip if you're in big waves never look behind you because the waves will look absolutely enormous from behind you. I always remember a friend saying to me that once, he said, look at the size of those waves behind us. And I was like, well, don't look behind us. Because all you're doing is scaring the crap out of yourself. You know, I, I know sometimes there's monstrous waves in the past that have come up behind me and I'm just motoring along thinking, there's nothing you can do about the waves behind you. Just get on them and surf them in. Um, whatever's in front of you is what you've got to worry about. So, yeah, never lose your nerve and you'll be fine. So as you see, I mean, I go out in the boat and I mean, I know the risks and I accept the risks. You know, I know there's a very real chance in, in, that you, one day you might not come back. That's just the way it is. It's a dangerous place out or can be a dangerous place. I take every possible reasonable precaution. I carry all this safety equipment, um, but I do things the way I see or fit. I mean, it's my life on the line. Some people will comment. I know they're only trying to, you know, they're just concerned for my welfare maybe. Others are commenting because they feel there's a one rule and everybody should do it and that's what they said in the book that they read or that's what the safety bloke told them but knowing full, having no idea that every situation is different and there are certain reasons why you do things sometimes and why you don't other times but those sort of people can't get it into their heads that there is a difference probably because they've never been out there and experienced what's going on and once you've had some close encounters like I always remember a friend years ago he had his life he always wears his life jacket and he I don't know if you know with the life jackets he was doing nets and the nets grabbed onto something here one of these buckles and he almost went over the side I always remember that he almost got dragged over the side by his life jacket so on that occasion I know it's only a freak thing but on that occasion um, yeah, it kind of could have worked against him. And, you know, years people might, if he'd gone over and never come back, and somebody would have said, well, he died. Well, at least he had his life jacket on, you know. It's a shame that he never made it. But <laughs> yeah, but it was his life jacket that was the problem. Now, that's just a very, very, you know, one-off thing. Although, saying that, I don't know if you know these jackets, I have had these go into the net of the crab pot and get jammed before I'm going to throw the pot over couple of times and it's you know, I've gone whoa like that you know with the pot so what you find is if you've got any things that hang toggles clips buckles anything like that
they always want to get snagged into like crab pot nets, fishing nets, or whatever you're using, lines will always grab onto them. So be careful with those sort of things. Anything that you've got hanging off you, that you don't get it snagged in your gear. But like I say, I mean, I do take reasonable precautions. Um, obviously on videos, when you're watching films, you may think, well, that doesn't look safe and all, you know, but that's your perspective from a video. You're not actually out there. You don't actually know what I'm going through at that point. And quite often, I would have to explain for half an hour why I did it that way because I've already worked it out or done it many, many times to know that you don't want to do it the way you're thinking because of this, this and this. Now, quite often when you explain to people, most people understand and then you explain to them why and they, they understand it and, you know, you have a discussion about it. Uh, there's those others though that, you know, it's just point blank. No, you should do it this way because that man in that office told me that that's the way you do it. And those people are the ones that are going to end up having an accident because they can't think outside the box. They can't think, they have no foresight in what could possibly go wrong here, there and the other. But we all do things our own way. And like I say, I'm out there on my own, so I'm not affecting anybody else's lives. And if they do come out, they get offered a life jacket and then obviously I will take even more precautions because I have somebody else on the boat and it's not just me anymore so I can't just think about myself I have to think about other people and that's why quite often you see me fish alone because it it, it makes things a lot less complicated of course having two people in would be safer because if you went in the water or something like that and there's a second person I know that but that's why I have to be more cautious on my own because I'm on my own so things to think about. Like I said, I don't purposely go out there to get myself hurt. I go out there to have fun, catch fish, whatever, but not the bad side if I can help it. Now if you're new to using boats, uh, small boats, you might want to consider doing some courses. There's lots of different ones out there. Everything from first aid to boat stability to how to use your equipment, how to look after your boat, all this kind of stuff. And if you are thinking of getting a license, you will have to do these courses. Uh, there's a whole range of them that you have to do before you, they will give you your license. So, there's that. So anyway, today was just about how the stuff I carry on my boat and the way that I do things out there. Like I say, everything will vary a certain amount depending on where you are in the world. Because obviously you've got to take into account uh, weather, the currents, uh, who the amount of people in that area, maybe boats, other other users, and possibly even the wildlife that swims around there, and even things that might want to eat you. So, so you have all these different things. And of course, another thing you take into account as well is things like temperature, if it's hot, if it's cold. All these things will affect what you use and where you use. I mean, if you're in the tropics, you've probably got a life jacket. If you're up in the in up in the Antarctic somewhere, you're going to have a full-on survival suit on. You know, the whole kit. And you probably won't bother with the life jacket because that suit is what it's designed to do to keep you alive and afloat. So, yeah, everything will vary depending on where you come from. But in general, you would carry most of this equipment. So there you go. That's just a bit on safety and the way I do things and my experiences over the years. And if you just use some common sense to start with, then hopefully you'll never have to use any of this equipment. So until the next one.